Welcome to the Holden Senior Center. Thank you all for coming out on such a miserable day. I'm happy to welcome representatives from Myrick O'Connell who will give you all you need to know about estate taxation. I would like to introduce Arthur Bergeron, attorney Arthur Bergeron, who will start the program. Thank you very much, Claire. Oh, and the speaker came on, too. Uh, and, and, and thank you very much, Claire, for, for inviting us to come here to, uh, to Holden uh, for a series of uh, Council on Aging presentations, basically a legal series done by Myrick O'Connell. My name is Arthur Bergeron. Uh, and with me is Janet Moore. Uh, to, to, to start off with a couple of just quick introductions. First of all, we wanted to thank the folks from Eric's Patisserie for making the uh, sandwiches today. Uh, and we wanted to thank Chris Hines from fin Hines Financial, who was sitting in the back, for paying for your sandwiches today. That was, <laughs> was very nice of him. Chris was born and raised here in, uh, in uh, Holden, and he does financial planning in this, in this area. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, my, uh, as I mentioned, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I have been doing uh, or working in elder law for a, since I was a kid. Uh, I love doing elder law because I keep look, it, you're, you're the one crowd that still looks at me as being young, you know, so a lot of other folks don't. Um, but I, I, I always dealt with a variety of fields. I got invited to join Eric O'Connell about a year ago because of this work. But one of the things I love being there, at, there is I had always worked as an individual practitioner or with one partner. When people ask, interesting question in most areas, I would have to say, oh, let me look it up. Now it's nice because I can say, let me go down the hall because I'll find somebody who really, really knows the answer to that question. Uh, and when it comes to estate taxes, that's really Janet Moore, uh, who has been doing nothing but estate planning and estate taxation work forever, for 30 years. Yeah, see, we're all, we're all getting on. Um, so we're going to talk about a series of things. Today we're going to focus on that issue, planning to avoid estate taxation. It has been my experience when I talk to, to, to folks about estate planning, especially to elders. I, they basically have three worries, three things that keep them up at night. One is trying to avoid the probate process, whatever that is, and we're going to talk about that in a later presentation. Two is trying to not lose all of their money to the nursing home and that's not pretty, but we're going to talk about that over the next couple of months. And the third one is trying to make sure that after they die, that, that the government isn't actually part of their will. I mean, I've never found anybody who was doing their will and they said, now, you know, I'm leaving this to this, and, you know, I really want to leave some to the Internal Revenue Service. Now, they've done a lot for me, you know, and I really want to give something back. Now, I've yet to have anybody do that. So the, the goal of, of, of dealing with this issue is to simply avoid having the Internal Revenue Service and the State Department of Revenue as kind of part of your estate plan. Because if you don't do some planning, then sometimes they are part of your plan, and you want to know when that's going to be. So let me tell you a little bit about the background of what we're talking about here, and then Janet's going to go into a lot of the more current details. For those of you who don't know, there are two separate estate tax uh, systems. There is the federal one, and there's the state one. Uh, and until the mid-1990s, or the late 1990s, it was a little bit simpler to understand how everything worked because they worked together. Um, there had, after a long time of the systems working separately, there had been a vote here in Massachusetts to couple or to connect the Massachusetts estate tax to the federal estate tax. And we became uh, a so-called sponge tax. And the reason why this, this was a very handy thing to do back then was at that time, the federal, system had, the federal system worked such that whatever money the federal system collected that could have otherwise been paid to the state got paid to the state. So you ended up getting like 100% credit from your federal bill for whatever it is that you paid to the state. And so th things worked out fine. And the level at which the federal government was taxing was 
a level that the state felt was reasonable, which at, at this point was six hundred seventy-five thousand uh, dollars. And uh, and, there, and at that time, the law said that the, that that amount, that six hundred seventy-five thousand dollar amount, was gradually going to go up to a million dollars by two thousand six. And everybody thought that was just great. And then came George Bush. What George Bush did, well, George Bush did a lot of things for a lot of folks, but what George Bush did for, for all of us um, is that he decided to eliminate the estate tax, except that he didn't want to, like, really eliminate the estate tax, because if he, if he had proposed the real elimination of the estate tax, the calculation for how much that was going to lose in federal revenue was so gigantic that he was never going to get passed. And so there resulted this strange law that, You've all seen the results of over the last few years that there was a law that said that there was going to be a, a gradual increase in the in the exempt amount. Remember, we mentioned that the exempt amount was scheduled to go from about six hundred some thousand dollars to about a million dollars in 2006. Uh, as a result of what George did, that amount got scheduled to go from a million dollars to all the way up to 3.5 million dollars by 2009, which is what happened, uh, and then to get repealed in 2000. Last year, which is also what happened, you heard those stories. If you were lucky enough to die last year, you didn't have to pay any federal estate tax. Uh, and then it was supposed to go back to the old system in this year, in 2011, and the exemption was supposed to go back to a million dollars. Now, it was always assumed that at some point last year all of these things would be faced, but of course they weren't because everybody was busy. And then eventually something got dealt with at the very end of the year, the, begin the beginning of this year. And for the rest of this story, Janet Moore is going to explain it to you. Janet? Hi, everyone. Um, again, very nice for everyone to come out today. It shows how hardy the Holden people are. And um, you may not know, but I'm one of you. Um, I moved here in 2004, so I'm a neighbor as well. Um, one of the things that Arthur pointed out, but I would just want to stress, is the fact that when George Bush instituted these changes, even though it was going to be for a temporary period of time, they eliminated the state death tax credit, which is that sponge tax amount that Arthur mentioned, which would have been the Massachusetts tax. And because that tax was then eliminated, Massachusetts uncoupled with, with the federal um, law, and we now have our own Massachusetts um, estate tax law back in place again. So what, what does Massachusetts have? It kept the old federal law, the law that existed on December 31st, 2000. So we're going back quite a ways to get back to that point. But what that did was keep the sponge tax in effect, so that that's still the um, way Massachusetts looks at things. Massachusetts looks at whether an estate is over or under a million dollars to determine whether or not there will be a Massachusetts estate tax. And then the federal, as Arthur said, was going to go up to 3.5, then go to a million, I'm sorry, then go to zero and be at a million this year. So then what happened? As Arthur said, Everyone thought this 10-year federal tax law change would be addressed sometime in 10 years. They certainly had enough time to do that. Well, at the end of last year, when they were looking at going back to the old federal law being a million, Congress finally, in the last two weeks of December, decided we've got to do something. So what they did was a quick fix. It's a two-year fix, basically. So a lot of us thought they would go back and just do 2009 all over again. But instead, they've made additional changes. What that is, is instead of a $3.5 million exemption, it became a $5 million exemption. So on the federal side, for at least the next two years, if your estate is less than $5 million, you don't need to worry about federal estate taxes. One of the other nice things that the federal government did was say, okay, we're going to make that $5 million portable for spouses. What does that mean? That means if <clears throat> there's a husband and a wife 
and one of them dies and hasn't used their entire $5 million, they get to bequeath that to their spouse. So in a sense, on the federal level, between husbands and wives, you have $10 million to play with. Janet, do they have to actually have to give that to their spouse, or does the spouse no. automatically get it? No, it would they happen. They have to do anything special in order to save it. Okay. At least I believe that's true. All of this is new, so we don't have forms and things, but I don't believe the executor has to actually make... Um, make a declaration of that, although it's possible that you would. So something to keep in mind anyway. So the good news of our end of the year tax law change is there's the $5 million estate tax exemption, which also is a $5 million gift tax exemption. And up until last year, the gift tax was only a million dollars. It had not gone up to the 3.5. And there's also a $5 million generation skipping tax, which we won't deal with too much here because that's a tax that's really difficult to understand. And it only applies if you're giving assets to grandchildren and skipping over your children's generation. Um, but anyway, all of those are now $5 million for 2011 and 2012. Now we're back in the soup that what if the federal government still doesn't do anything in the next two years? And if they couldn't do it in 10, I'm not certain they can <clears throat> do it in, in two going forward, but we'll be hopeful. 